My name is Susan Lynch. I'm a professor of medicine at Columbia University in New York, and I'm here at EHA 2024 presenting data on our abstract linbozeltamab in patients with relapse refractory multiple myeloma in the Linka MM1 study, depth and durability of response at 14 months median follow-up. As you know, bispecific antibodies are very effective. They are off-the-shelf treatment and they work very well in heavily pre-treated multiple myeloma patients. The response rate of those bispecific antibodies that target BCMA is 61 to 63 percent. There's an antibody called linvulzeltamab from Regeneron that targets BCMA on the multiple myeloma cell and CD3 on the T cells and thereby engages the T cells to kill the multiple myeloma cell. So here at EHA, we report data with a cutoff in January 2024. That means with a median follow-up of 14.3 months. Here is a design of the study. So patients received a step-up dosage. They then continued with a 200 milligrams dosage. After 14 weeks, they received the treatment not weekly, but biweekly. And in case they had a good remission, a VGPR, a very good partial remission, they could continue to receive monthly treatment. The primary endpoints of this study was safety for the phase one, and then the overall response rate for the phase two part of the study. You see some patient characteristics, and I just want to summarize this. You can see that 30% of the patients were older, 75 years and older. Around 18% had an ISS stage 3. That means they had a higher stage, more advanced multiple myeloma. And we see also other patients with risk factors, such as multiple myeloma that's outside of the bone marrow in 16% of all the patients, and also 40% of the patients had high risk cytogenetics. At least um, 80% were refractory to an IMIT a proteasome inhibitor and to a CD38 monoclonal antibody such as daratumumab. Here you can see the response rates. So the 117 patients were observed um, for 14.3 months in median. And when you look for the overall response rate, you see a high response rate of 71% with 50% of, of the patients achieving a complete remission. Among the patients with complete remissions, we also saw a high rate of minimal residual disease negativity, 93% were MRD negative. So this is excellent for patients who are triple class exposed. Also, we saw the deep responses in different subgroups. You can see that patients with EMP, that is extramedullary multiple myeloma or paramedullary multiple myeloma, that means multiple myeloma that's outside the bone, 30% had a complete remission rate, also in older patients, patients who are 75 years and older, 50% of those patients had a complete remission rate. And also patients with high risk cytogenetics, you can see 50% complete remission rate, excellent outcome. We also look for the progression-free survival, but that was not reached at the time of presentation. You can see this for patients, for all patients receiving the 200 milligrams and for patients with complete remission. Uh, not reached a very nice plateau. When we look what happened after 12 months, you can see that the probability of being progression-free after a year of treatment was 70% in all patients and 96.3%, that's the green curve, in patients who underwent a complete remission. Also, the oval survival looks excellent. Uh, the median oval survival for all patients was 31.4 months. Looking for a 12 months overall survival, that was 75.3% for all patients. But we really see a nice, nice curve in the patients who achieved the complete remission. The median overall survival was not reached. And when you look after a year, all of the patients who had a complete remission were alive. There's a lot of discussion about cytokine release syndrome, and you can see here in green grade one, so a very low level of the cytokine release syndrome. Uh, patients mainly had a cytokine release syndrome with the step-up doses. That means with the first dosing, the five milligram priming dose, and then subsequently you can see that the CRS disappears. So that makes that drug very well tolerated, and hopefully we might use this drug also as an outpatient drug. Interestingly, the duration until the CRS occurred was 11 hours, and the duration of the CRS was relatively short with 15.6 hours. 
So in conclusion, we report here a media, we report here a follow up of the data with linvolzeltamab, uh, a bispecific monoclonal antibody targeting BCMA. The median follow up was 14.3 months, and we saw a very nice overall response rate of 71% with a CR of 50%. Um, we saw that the median progression free survival was not reached, and that the probability of being progression free at 12 months was 70%. Linvolzomab had a good safety profile uh, with a low grade of CRS, also neutropenia in 42%, uh, grade 3, 4, but it was manageable. I think the biggest problem we have, like with all other bispecific antibodies, is the infection risk and the grade of higher grade 3 and 4 infections, which could be managed with antibiotics, but also with immunoglobulins, prophylactically IVIG. An ongoing phase three trial uh, will report data, hopefully very soon. Uh, those are the data from the Linker MM3 trial. Thank you so much for your attention.